Hey pals, I'm here today to review three books I read recently and all three of them are historical fiction set in 1950s England and all three of them also happen to be blue, which was a happy coincidence. I got two of these out of the library, realised they had similar themes and then found one other book that matched those themes on my shelves and decided to read them all close together and you know see if I discovered any connections and also I just really love reading historical fiction in the colder months. Let me know if you do too. So the first one I'm going to talk about is actually the one I read first and this was my first read of 2021 and it was a perfect first read. I really enjoyed it and that is Small Pleasures by Claire Chambers. I think this is her seventh novel but it's the first time I've heard of her as an author and I really enjoyed this. I gave it four and a half stars so I'll definitely be picking up her other books. I did look into like some interviews with this author and she mentioned this is quite different to her other novels because previously her books have been more humorous so if you've read them do let me know if you've like read this too and how they compare because I enjoyed the the mood of this one so perhaps her other ones wouldn't work as well for me not sure so this one opens in 1957 in the southeast suburbs of London we follow a woman called Jean who is approaching her 40s she lives at home with her aging mother who's incredibly dependent on her and really controls her life and controls it in a way that means that Jean can't really have any social life outside of work. Jean works as a journalist and because of her gender and the time this is set in, she's really limited to writing sort of women's articles. So she writes a lot of articles about household cleaning, gardening, fashion, that sort of thing. And she's allowed one day to write a slightly different article which is about immaculate conception in I think rabbits and after that's published she gets a letter from a woman who says my daughter who's 10 was born by immaculate conception and I'm happy for you to come and talk to us and to publish our story because I'd like more people to know that this is possible. So Jean is allowed to lead on this article because of the sensitive nature of it being to do with the woman's body and like whether or not she had sex they don't think it's appropriate for a male journalist to participate in that investigation so the book is about that investigation Jean meets the mother she meets the 10 year old girl and she meets the uh, mother's husband Harold so the story is about whether the little girl was born via immaculate conception you follow Jean as she goes to speak to the mother, the little girl, the sort of adoptive father, and then she also speaks to people from the mother's past. But the main thrust of the story is actually Jean's building relationship with this family. She sort of gets something different from each member of this family. They're like this perfect cardboard cutout family. They all seem very happy. But Jean senses in each of them there's something they're missing and they can perhaps get it from her and so each of them sort of pull her to them in different ways and she starts to recognize that perhaps her involvement is no longer appropriate she doesn't really know where the line is with with any of the family members and it's a really beautiful story i'd call this story really gentle it has an overall feeling of melancholy and i'm not going to deny that it doesn't have sad points in it but it just felt really cosy and comforting and also like joyful and I think it's because a lot of books that are published historically and now you know thrive on drama and a lot of the time drama comes with people doing mean-spirited things to one another and I love books like that but this book is sort of devoid of that this book is about a group of, of decent people you know Jean's mother's not particularly nice but she's not awful so it's about a group of decent people who are trying in their own way to, to live their life, but they're not trying to do it in a way that, that hurts anyone else. And I think it's really wonderful to watch this really gentle story unfold of how these people sort of strive to find joy in what feels like a really restricted time. And I just loved it. I gave it four and a half stars. I felt like the only reason I pulled a half star back is because the ending was maybe just a tiny bit rushed for me. I would have liked it to play out over a few more pages like 30 more pages even would have been enough i really love this i think the writing style is beautiful i think the period detail was spot on there's loads of descriptions of food clothes decor so if you love all that this is a really great book to go for and i hear so many comparisons to sarah waters rightly so you know if you're gonna compare any writer to another writer in the historical fiction field sarah waters is the one to go for right because she's a massive name 
I very rarely agree with that comparison, but I do with this book. I think if you enjoy Sarah Waters' books, particularly her more modern historical fiction, I think you'll really enjoy this book. I thought it was wonderful, really beautifully written, and I'd highly recommend it. The next one I was kindly sent from the publisher, and the publisher are Europa Editions, and this is The Beautiful, The River Within by Karen Powell. I believe this is a debut novel. I really enjoyed this one too. So this is set in 1955 in a small North Yorkshire village. So this is the only one that isn't set in London out of the three. And it certainly feels more historical because of that. I found that really interesting reading these three books closely together because it really made me like think about which ones felt like they were set further ago and which ones included more commentary on like the post-war era um, and gender and race and all those things that were, you know, um, really at the forefront of people's minds at that time, class as well. Um, and this one definitely felt like the most historical because it's set in a very small rural village rather than like the capital of England, right? So I thought this was beautifully written. This author's writing is compared to Thomas Hardy and I have tried a couple of Thomas Hardy books, never finished any, although I do intend to and I completely agree. If you do not like really descriptive lyrical writing, this won't be for you. This is incredibly focused on the land. There's lots of descriptions of the movement of water, of flowers, of trees, all those sorts of things. I really enjoyed it. I think you could turn to any page and pull out like five really beautiful descriptive sentences. So that's the writing style. The plot is a little bit <laughs> complicated and not. The book opens with a young girl called Lenny and her brother and another young man who's around her age called Alexander discovering a body in the local river. The body is of a young boy called Danny who they all knew, he's around their age and nobody knows how he got in the water, whether it was an accident, suicide, whether he was pushed, so nobody knows but you immediately get a feeling that something slightly odd has gone on and that in some way Lenny, her brother and this other guy Alexander who happens to be sort of romantically entangled with Lenny and also the heir to the local estate you feel like the three of them could somehow be involved and then the story is told from different perspectives in different times so you get Danny's story the, the boy who's found drowned in the water in the months leading up to his death and you find out like what his intentions were, what he was hoping for in his life, and I actually enjoyed his bits the most. He was just a really decent person, and I thought his, his sections were really beautiful. Then you also get um, sections from Lenny's perspective. Her father is actually sort of the head housekeeper at the estate house, and so there's this entanglement she has with Alexander's family, very much to do with class, and she knows that means that perhaps her interests in him romantically are not acceptable because you wouldn't expect the heir to an estate to marry his um, employee's daughter so it's all a bit odd so you follow Lenny's story and you also follow Alexander's story but there's also a massive part of the novel that is focused on Alexander's mother sort of many years before when she met his father married into this estate and then commentary on the estate and what it's like for her being a woman of this estate, sort of the lady of the manor, I guess. So it is a bit mysterious, right? But it's by no means a mystery novel. Yes, you do find out how Danny got in the water and you do slowly find out more secrets throughout these character storylines, but really it's much more of a thematic novel. It's much more of a character study and a commentary on I think how trapped each of these individual characters are by their gender and their class and their place in society. They all want something out of life which they perhaps cannot achieve based on their gender and their class. And I think the commentary on that was, was really beautifully executed. I always love commentary on, you know, this time in Britain, sort of dying out of the aristocracy a lot of um, wealthy landowners had to start selling sections of their land or and or opening their houses up for viewings in order to to make them be able to afford to run them you know the remains of the day by Kazuo Shigeru has a lot of commentary on that and that's certainly in this novel as well I also think it's you know it's really interesting 
even if you don't live in Britain, to um, come here and visit lots of National Trust houses and then now be places you can just go and walk around um, and to think that people would have once had a family of maybe five living in this massive great mansion and think that was completely within their rights to do that and to, uh, to take um, you know, tenancy fees from people who use their land. So um, yeah, I think it was really interesting commentary. I really enjoyed this one. I gave it three and a half stars in the end. This would have been a four star for me, except from, there's some commentary towards the end, which is to do with um, women and I guess like women's mental stability, which I felt was just dealt with a bit, it was a bit rushed. I think uh, something of such complexity, which was really complicated, you know, historically especially, um, I just felt could have had more time spent on it. Um, and that just meant that I didn't want to give this one four stars, but I definitely recommend it if you like slow um, and books with lyrical writing, because this certainly ticks both those boxes. And I will look at whatever Karen Powell publishes in the future and definitely pick it up, because I really enjoyed this one. And then lastly, we have This Lovely City by Louise Hare. I think this book is really beautiful. Actually, all three of these books um, are really beautifully published. So this is a debut novel, and I will 100% pick up any other books Louise Hare brings out, because I thought this was glorious. I gave this one four stars. I really enjoyed it. So this is set in 1950s London. We follow Laurie, who is a postman and a jazz musician, and he came over on the Empire Windrush ship from Jamaica in 1948. And at the opening of the novel, he's cycling across Clapham Common when he discovers the body of a mixed race baby in the pond. And Laurie is immediately taken to the police station and accused of being the father and the murderer of this baby and after his release he is regularly pulled back into the station and all of his friends who are from Jamaica came over when he did are also accused and also his girlfriend who is mixed race but born to a white British mother is also accused pretty much any person who is black or mixed race in the local area is looked on with suspicion by the um, white citizens because they assume that this child has been born of a mixed race relationship. The parents are too scared to raise this child because of the awful racism that um, would have been targeted at this child and so they killed it. And so you're following the mystery of who the parents of the child might be, of how the baby ended up in the pond, but you're also following all the secrets and sort of various entanglements between all these characters. So the novel goes back to 1948 when Laurie and his friends first arrived from on the Empire Windrush and you see the like possible liaisons that could have happened which could mean that some of them are the father of this child and you see the secrets Laurie might have from his girlfriend Evie, the secrets Evie might have from Laurie. So the novel isn't just about the mystery of this baby. There's lots of other sort of mysteries tied in. I thought this book was thematically excellent. The commentary on class, race, gender, racism at the time in the UK was excellent. I also just thought this was a really excellent story. The characters are really complex so I, I really enjoyed watching the mysteries unfold and you know something I always say I really enjoyed hearing someone's story from their perspective and maybe sympathising with them and then hearing about how that person is perceived by others and then maybe not sympathising with them. I thought that was really well handled. I think this out of the three would be the most universally enjoyed by readers because, as I said, The River Within is going to be suitable for people who like very lyrical and very slow books, which I do. Small Pleasures is going to be, again, suitable for people who like very slow books, very gentle books that focus on like the minutiae of life which I do. Whereas this lovely city is, you know, still a fairly, I guess this is a medium paced novel, but this has the most plot, I'd say, of the three, but still manages to have, you know, really solid writing, great characterization and an enjoyable pace, I felt. So I'd say this has the least beautiful writing style out of the three, but it has probably the strongest plot arc out of the three. So I gave this four stars, like I said, 
Um, I really enjoyed this one and I will pick up any books this author brings out in the future. So in terms of similarities between these novels, funnily enough, I noticed that both of these were focused on the parentage of a child. In this one we want to know who the parents are and how the baby got into the pond and in this one we want to know how the baby was conceived and who the father might be. And then both of these ones have a focus on drowned bodies and both of them having references to Ophelia. So there's lots of imagery in this one um, in regards to Ophelia. And in this one, the baby is actually named by the journalist as Ophelia in the papers um, until they know what her actual name is. And so, yeah, it's just really random that I picked up, you know, knowing they'd have, you know, some similar themes because of the time period and the location, but those fairly specific things carrying through um, a couple of the novels each was just really interesting. So I'd highly recommend all three of these and I would love, love, love more recommendations for books like this. I really love reading books set in um, post-war England. I just think it's a really interesting time to look at how, as a country, people had to just try and move on and live with an awful lot of trauma that was ignored under the sort of stoic um, we're British and stiff upper lip and we can all do it so yeah I just think it's a really um, excellent time period to focus on so I'd love more recommendations feel free to leave them down below thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video bye